All right, welcome back everybody. We got the second round, front nine, Myrtle Beach Open. Show you the leaderboard thus far. Katrina Holly, Rebecca Ellen, that's Madison, Courtney, and Jessica Beckett. Shout out to Jessica there. Love you, girl. We got Elaine King, Deanne Carey. So not a lot of score separation in the front four for the most part. Uh, Holly and uh, Katrina have been staying pretty close together there. So we'll see if uh, this, this course is going to give a little bit of score separation. Shout out to all the sponsors as well. And big shout out to uh, buddy Steve-O and Nick Nemo in the background there. A little time lapse working on the mural there on the uh, whole 18s basket position. Reggie Raps. Thank you, Reggie. Valerie Williams at Wicked Aces. Thank you again. Everybody go check out wickedaces.com, please. And Dink Swim Pool Specialist. You'll see them throughout the uh, event. As well as the Nosh Pit. Go check them out. Follow them on Facebook. They've got tons of followers. There's a reason why they follow. And Too Far Under Par, Greg Hill. Thank you for all your hard work on both of these courses. Getting them ready for the events. As well as all the events that happen. Greg Hill puts in hours and hours of work. Before these events. So, thank you. <clears throat> and... My buddy Greg Herzog. Thank you, dude. All right, hole number one is a very, very tricky par three. We actually have a new, uh, new version of the gold. It's a lot longer than it used to be. A little further back, so you kind of have to navigate kind of the same line, but just a lot, you know, a little more straighter, you know, just to make it down there. And uh, you kind of want a little bit of a right finish down at the end, a little bit of turn on it. To avoid hitting the trees that are pretty much dead center. Uh, just just navigating through the trees wherever you can. There's a, not a whole lot of ways to do it, but it can be done. So we'll see how these ladies can navigate around it. Myrtle Beach Open 2020. Welcome. And thank you, Grip Equipment. First to the tee for our lead card of the Open Women Division, Katrina Allen. And you can see the, the best line is right over that first bench there. And right after you get to that second one, you kind of want to... You can go straight for the most part, but it uh, can get a little dicey down there. Katrina played that really well. Holly Finley. Yeah, and that's pretty common, catching an early tree. She had to find her way out of that to save a par. I'm super stoked to have Rebecca on the on the lead card. No surprise though. Yeah, it looked like she could Hit the same tree that Holly hit, I think. Ellen Whitburn. Yeah, this should be a pretty good, fairly good cor good old course for her, Ellen. She's a uh, forehand dominant, and it's a it's a fairly forehand friendly course. Not as much on hole one though. Kind of hard to tell where that finished. Okay, Rebecca, a little, uh, a little early, just behind uh, the short T here. The old short T, I should say. Like I said, there's lots of trees down, pretty much all the way through, especially in that middle part, right where that uh, the old short T is at. There's room to navigate through, so they could definitely save some pars. And looks like they pretty much all have wound up right in this same 
same little area here. Yeah, it was, it was good out there by Ellen. The train had a little bit of a, a little bit of a gap to run it. Just caught the cage there. You don't see that a lot by uh, by Holly, but like I said, she's yeah, she doesn't miss those comebackers very often. She's super focused when she has to make a comebacker. It's it's amazing to watch that. Like that's the hardest putt to make is a long comebacker right after you just miss something, especially airballing it, and she just it doesn't face her at all. So love to watch her putt. Alright, and they're tapping out. We'll move on to hole number two here. Hole number two is, it's pretty straightforward. It's for the most part, you see a lot of straight gut shots with a mid-range. Uh, kind of catch a little little skip over to the left a little bit. Um, a lot of people throw the hyzer over the fence. Uh, that has a tendency, if you uh, get too much of an extreme angle, it can flare in a little further than you want. But for the most part, there's a lot of trees down there to, to slow you down to where you're not, uh, you don't have to worry about that too much. So it's uh, not too difficult of a hole. So we'll see what these ladies can do. And that's a pretty common shot coming in there. And that's lots of roots down there to kick off of and slow you down. So and Ellen with the rare backhand. And that looked pretty decent. Should I have some kind of obstruction down there, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, not looking too bad. This hole is deceiving because you you can you can kind of see the basket, but it's it just it's something about the fence and the cars on the right. It just kind of throws you off with uh, how far it is. It's only 250 feet, so it's amazing how many people come up short on this hole. Ellen taking advantage there. Very good putt by her. She needs to have more confidence in that backhand after all there. It was pretty good. Look like having to straddle on this. This is pretty common around holes like this at Soxty where you get a good drive down there within like 20 feet, 30 feet still. And you think it's a good drive, but you're still going to wind up having some kind of straddle. So... It's definitely something you want to practice before you play soccer. Steve's uh, straddle putts. So, yeah. that's a little bit low there for Katrina. Just getting started though. She had, this, had similar similar things happen in the, the first round. Just forcing that one in there. Hole number three is pretty much a, not really a dog leg. It kind of 
kind of looks like that for the most part, but it's it's a very forehand friendly hole. You just want to, there's not a lot, it, it takes a lot of late turn on a backhand to get this to, to come in nicely, and you have to hit the perfect angle, so it's very hard for a, a backhander to get in there. But uh, it can be done. This is just one of those easy poles for a forehander, so we'll see what Ella can do here. look too bad it's, it's down there she just got a little too little too high on that there are a lot of trees on either side to uh get some kicks on and that was a very good very good throw there by holly that'll give her a a long look at uh birdie katrina's kind of getting that yeah right there just kind of getting there she needed to carry a little more before it started started that late turn but that'll still work out just fine for her she can at least have an opportunity to for birdie rebecca just didn't get enough on that and that kind of hyzers out on her it has a good uh good jump putt at it I'm pretty sure Katrina's got a wide open shot on here. Yeah. Just a little too high on that one. I'm trying to flex that in there. Yeah, pretty typical of sock steep. Even if you have an have a within your range putt or jump shot or something there's likely you have to navigate around a tree or there we go there's that nice hazard putt from holly excuse me katrina and still even there Rebecca's got to go to a straddle again. I've definitely learned to to be a much better straddle putter just playing this course alone. So it's it's one of those really key attributes that you need to have in disc golf if you're going to play multiple tournaments. Very nice by Holly, by saving par there. We'll tap out here, we'll head on to hole number four. Hole number four is a par four. It's, a, it's one of those, it's one of those typical East Coast court holes where you gotta, you have a line up the middle and you've got a little bit of a line to the left. Um, I see, you mostly are gonna see a lot of people take the, the middle gap straight up the gut. Just try to hazard flip something and keep it straight. Um, if you happen to go into the road to the right, I think that's OB, I don't think that's OB on this this hole. It doesn't look like it based on the T sign. Uh, so that's typically where people end up, and that's usually pretty safe because you have like a nice hyzer gap the whole way through. So it's winding up too far on the left is what's going to really get you in trouble on these this kind of hole. So just stay in the middle. And catch some good kicks like that. That's that's a decent place to be. You just don't want to be pinched up on that left because it's very very tight. And Holly just needs that to keep turning them, or at least die down. That's pretty good. Yeah, not a bad shot. That's that's not too deep over to the left, so she'll she'll have something to work with over there. Katrina trying to do what most people do and just yeah that that happens a lot where you you think you're doing good and you just happen to catch that one little bit of a tree but that's the ideal shot to where you can really get down there and uh, have a much easier easier shot at birdie kind of like Rebecca's doing that's exactly what we want that is a very good shot that's exactly what you want to do I was impressed by that shot that was Takes a lot of control to get that close on a backhand. 
And I can't tell. I think Katrina was thinking forehand roller, which is which is common here. I've this is something that I opt for. You have this uh, to the right, this whole field here. Just get it down on the ground as early as you can. It looks like she just caught something, but she still made it. Managed to get it on the ground. Got a little lucky there on that one, getting not getting too bad of a kick. Oh, we're breaking out another forehand. Oh yeah, very nicely done, Rebecca. That's what you want. Just like an easy pitch up. She kind of half ran that a little bit. Still, that's that's a great great place to be right there. We just easy wide open. Oh yeah, great, great putt right there. She had a lot of great putts. First two holes, getting warmed up. After that, she's she's wide open. Great shot by Ellen there as well. And Ellen's trying to trying to make that comeback here. Just at plus one. She's definitely within range. It's Rebecca for a nice nice birdie putt right here. And it just a little bit too much to the right. Right top chain just bounced right out. On to hole number five. number five this one has a new pin placement it is kind of tucked in you can kind of see where it opens up down there a little bit that's where where you see the sunlight that's gonna you're gonna want to carry a little bit straight down there you kind of want to get a kind of a hazard flip but ride a little straight and then finish there's not a whole lot of room for too much hyzer but there is some room if you hug the right side of the uh, trees down there uh, I'm curious as to what Ellen's going to do on this with a forehand, because that's typically what someone like myself would throw. But um, I've seen plenty of people make it there with a backhand, just with a nice mid-range that flips up for them and still finishes. Yeah, and that's perfect. That would be parked on the uh, the alternate basket on there. That was very, very nicely done by her. Yeah, and see just a little bit of flat now and then highs ring out. That's perfect. They're making this look really easy. There are lots of trees down there to to miss. Especially some of these one of these first two that you can't really see, but they're all like making this look way that was a really good shot right there. They're making this look way easier than it is. It looks a little short. Yeah, and just a little, just a little short for her, but she didn't wind up too deep, so she's got to. She can see the basket and uh, save it from there, and almost ran that one in. It looked like. That's good. Good run jump up right there. 
Good try. Might as well run it. No, no danger there. There's lots of new uh, basket locations here at Sakasti, so I'm trying to change it up. It's one of the reasons why I don't have drone footage, in case you're wondering. I have not uh, cut out there to get the uh, drone footage for the new basket placements at the, during this tournament. So just get to take an opportunity to show off Eric Sepich artwork on the T signs, which he did both for Splinter and for Sakasti. So shout out to Eric Sepich. Great work. And Holly, she should make this comebacker if she holds true to what I've said about her, and that's rare to ever see that. That is the one percent shot that you will see her miss on a after missing a putt that she should make. That one percent that was she'll shake it off. Just got to shake it off. I believe. Did that gave her a bogey? Was that a bogey or a double bogey? Whichever. She'll shake it off. She's still not far away. It's still still fairly close within these four. There's plenty of holes left. Moving on to hole number six. Hole number six is another uh, a lot of guardian trees down the center. So you have to pick a line either to the left or the right. So it's forehand friendly and backhand friendly. I have aced this hole. Just want to brag real quick that I've aced it on a forehand, so I'm hoping to see Ellen Wibboom get down there. Um, there's a ditch down there that can slow you down, so if you overthrow it, you're not too bad. There's a lot of trees to stop you. There's trees left and right, so it's uh, most people just throw a fairway driver that flips up and rides straight. Kind of like hole four for the most part, just shorter version of hole four. And we got Ellen just a little too early. Happens a lot here with these early trees. Mostly those ones right there to the left that cats just happens to hit. And Rebecca just catching a tree down there on the right, kicking her in, but not too bad. And Holly just not getting enough on that. This is a tough, tough place to be way back there. Trying to save a par from all the way back there is very, very hard to do. That as well. There's so many trees to navigate through. Katrina catching another early tree there. She still has a putt at it. She might have to straddle putt on that one a little bit. Depending on where she's at. She's close to that ditch. That was a great forehand by Rebecca. That was a long bid for par for Holly. And came so close. So, so close. Typically down here, there's lots of straddle putting going on. Just a tad bit too low. Everybody's going to tap out, and we'll move on to hole number seven. One of my personal favorites at, hole, at the Soxy. Hole number seven.
Rule number seven is a par four. Very long par four. There are two two options. I see you see a lot of forehand drives on this. Mostly with the forehand, you're just trying to place it down at a specific point down there. Um, backhand, pretty high backhand turnover. Something that's gonna gonna hold a line at once it starts flexing. But then have a pretty consistent finish at the end there. I've seen this eagled before by our, uh, well, I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. It's like a myth, but we know that it's true. Chad Sullivan's eagled this in twice in one round, but uh, it's pretty hard to do. So if you can get down there and eagle this, it's it's a pretty good pump. But uh, lots of uh, early trees to hit. Elias down there. And you'll see him quite a bit and with the forehand and that is Goliath right there that is the one that slows down a lot of discs and it kind of looked like Katrina kicked off of one there but not not really wasn't 100% sure on that but you definitely don't want to end up on the left side there and that early gap a lot of people use that too I don't know that they do it on purpose but there are some people that definitely do but it's pretty friendly there too. You just don't want to be too far to this right because it is uh, quite difficult. And again, big thanks to Greg Hill for uh, all his work. I know the whole seven can be a little, a uh, little wet at times, depending on the weather. But uh, he spent a lot of time pumping out water. So everybody, thank Greg Hill for all his maintenance that he's done on this course. Katrina, that looks a little high, like it's going to hide her out, but she can work with that. This is not, bad, not a bad spot to be in at all. Looks like she could almost run that one in. Yeah, she goes long on that one. <laughs> yeah, even that, even they noticed that. Rebecca just gonna pitch out there. Ellen might give a little bit a bit on this one. She does. Tad bit over. Great putt by Katrina. Very good bird there. Yeah, we're not used to seeing Holly struggle on the putting, so. Solid putt there. Katrina's gradually trying to make an attempt to pull away here, so we'll see what happens. We have two holes left. Heading on to hole number eight. Hole number eight is a long, long bid. Takes 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 a good pump to get down there. 340 feet. There, like most of the holes here, there are trees dead in the center. There's a lot of people. We, we catch one of those early trees. You could really get a bad kick either way uh, it's almost better to get a kick to the left in my opinion because there's some opening down there on the right you don't want to be early on the right at all uh, that's jail for sure so you just want to get something down there almost to the right nice and straight hyzer out play the ground flare and you'll be just fine and that's a little early yeah caught that tree that's a common tree to hit especially on this hole on this tee especially Rebecca yeah just 
not getting enough on that one, and that kind of ends up to the left. Not too bad over there, depending on how early you went in. Sometimes you'll be surprised at uh, how open it can be in some of those areas. And Ellen has run out. She won't have too much difficult to get up there for up and down for par. Holly, that's looking good. It's just got to get down. Drive a long putt at it. Wonder if that tree slowed Holly down. Oh yeah, easy, easy tap in par there for Ellen. Hmm. Holly is always so close on every single one of those long long bids that just they all look like they're gonna go in there we go nice par save by Holly par save by Ellen had a nice little gallery here it was pretty exciting to see that I like seeing people uh, come out and watch it's a lot of fun This one right here? You certainly can. I'm glad you did ask. <laughs> I put it, I should have been shangling it a little bit. Spirit Armor, thank you again for hooking me up with this nice piece. Yeah, put it up for you. This is my bling. on the hole number nine here hole number nine is for the most part you can typically you're going to see like a backhand turnover like a mid-range or a putter or something with a little stability at the end of it um, a few forehands if you just want to save you know just take a obvious par and not not try to get anything not try to do fancy um but yeah it's, it's a fairly easy par three it's just uh getting the barrel this this is definitely one of the bonus birdies on the course because you just got to hit a perfect line without running into the trees there. Shout out to Chad LaFair right there. That's the OG disc golf photographer guy right there. Awesome photographer. If you don't know, now you know. And Katrina, I think she's just taking that placement. Just going to get it out there. Take her par on this. Move on to the next hole. Rebecca. It's a little early when you go through those trees there. But it, it's been done before, and it's worked out before, so. I think Ellen's trying the same thing. Just get it out there in the opening and have an easy look at the, the par. Holly wants to get down there, though. That was very well thrown. Nice. Very good, yeah. Yeah, most, for the most part, there's, there's a nice big opening down here that uh, pretty much allows you to do whatever. She wanted that one. Safe run on here. Lots of stuff to slow it down. See if I can capitalize on the birdie here. Oh, and she wanted that one. Can she get it on the comeback? She's got some movement in the background. I always got to be mindful, folks, when you're on a tournament like this, if you can be seen, you can potentially be a distraction. Did slow her down, though. As always, she makes those putts, so. Katrina going to end up still in the lead. But again, this, this is the kind of course, there's 10 holes left after this, so there's plenty of opportunity for separation with some of the longer par fives on this hole so we'll see where we end up at the end of the day
So yeah, that'll do it for the front nine. Katrina M minus two, Holly plus three, Rebecca plus four, and Ellen plus two. So a lot of, a lot of close, close action there for the most part. Big thanks to Above Ground Level Discs for their support. Thanks to everybody that's, that's been supportive of anything that I've done. But uh, go check out Above Ground Round Level on, uh, on the interwebs, agldisc.com. J Mike's Flavor Station. Definitely follow them on Facebook. Got that new season opening up in January. January is taco season all the way through December, <laughs> pretty much, or November. And Steve-O and Nick Nemo there doing work on the mural. We'll have a little video out soon to show people that. Dane at Charleston T-Shirt Factory. Reggie Rhodes of Mr. Reggie Raps. Good peoples. Valerie Williams at Wicked Aces. Go check out wickedaces.com. She's a great person. She has a little podcast thing that she does. I love it. Love her. Dink Swim Pool Specialist. Josh and Dakota. Get at them. The Nosh Pit. I can't wait to go to the Nosh Pit again. Too Far Under Par. Greg Hill. Gail. Spirit Armor, Mr. Goose. And last but not least, my buddy Greg Herzog. Get at him if you have any uh, any editing needs, any graphics, special effects, animations. He's He does it all, so... Check him out.